My word, do we have a lot to get into in today's video. So go ahead and flip your flapjacks and let's get straight into this, guys. We're going to talk about the markets. We're going to talk about Jerome Powell. we got so much to talk about here, okay? So first off, I just want to start out by looking at the stock market in general today, all right? We're looking at the Dow here. So first off, the Dow is down about 1.5% today. NASDAQ went down over 2% today. S&P 500 down 1.5% today. I thought it was an interesting day. So first off, before I went to bed, it was around 2 a.m., which is about five hours before the market opens here in Vegas, right? So it was the the market was going up and I'm like, this must be a trick, okay? We know the Fed's coming out today and announced that there's no way the market's gonna go up. And right before Jerome Powell, the Fed chair, actually starts talking, the market actually reaches a peak for the day, or over 24,000 on the day. And uh, it was just like, this must be a setup, man. This must be a setup. And sure enough, he comes out and talks and we're gonna look at all that right now. And uh, the market just starts tanking. Next thing you know, in a very quick amount of time, goes from up about 200 points in the day of the Dow to all of a sudden, was down three, four plus hundred points in a matter of like 20 or 30 minute span, okay? First off, this was my first time actually listening to a, a you know, the full take on what Jerome Powell had to say. Um, my first time actually hearing him talk in depth and whatnot, I, I will say, for a Fed chair, he's actually the first one that I would say would did not bore me to death. The other ones in the past, uh, Ben Bernanke, Janet Yellen, oh my gosh, it was like put me to sleep type stuff. And you're looking at a guy that listens to conference calls for the fun of things, okay? So, uh, you know, it takes a lot to bore me, but my word, like, uh, you know, the, the past ones are so boring. He's actually uh, pretty decent to actually listen to, so I'm impressed by that, all right? So stocks plunged through the lows of the year. Uh, by the way, the market's literally hit the lowest they've been all year this year, and investors flocked to bonds after the Fed failed to sound like it was easing off its tighter union policy. The Fed raised interest rates by a quarter point, which was expected, and it lowered its median rate forecast to two hikes for next year from three hikes, which were, you know, kind of expected in there. But the central bank also retained language in its statement that the market saw as more aggressive than expected in terms of future rate hikes, all right? But what really scared the markets was Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said the Fed was satisfied with this program to reduce the balance sheet and had no plan to change it. Traders see that as another tightening path since the Fed is reducing the balance sheet by making fewer purchases as treasury and mortgage securities it holds mature. James Polson, the chief market strategist of the Thoy Group, he says Powell said he sees no problem with the balance sheet runoff. That's the one that hurt, said Polson. That's another path of dovishness that he did not take, all right? The Fed had been expected to raise interest rates by a quarter point and signal fewer rate hikes in the future. It had also been expected to lower its growth forecast and change the language in its statement to reflect that it will be much more dependent upon incoming economic data. It did lower the growth forecast for 2019. It now sees around a 2.3% growth number uh, versus what was expected to be around a 2.5% originally, okay? So literally he came out and, and, you know, said what he had to say and uh, the market's just tanked and, you know, I'm not very surprised by that because it's just kind of, we're in that type of market right now. Okay, so I want to make a lot of points off this. The first point is, you know, there are a lot of people out there that have absolutely no faith in the U.S. economy without artificially low interest rates out there. There are definitely a group of people that literally think we cannot make it as a U.S. economy without these ridiculously low interest rates. And if interest rates just go to what like like they had historically been, uh, people are like freaking out still. They literally like uh, there's a group of people, a massive group of people, even on Wall Street and analysts and whatnot that literally think if we don't just keep the, these uh, you know ridiculously low interest rates like like it's just not going to work out. We're going to go back into a huge recession. Um, we're pretty much dependent upon very 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 low interest rates, and and it just amazes me because I'm like that just shows how little faith some have in like the U.S. economic system that you you feel like you have to constantly have these unbelievably low interest rates uh, for the economy to su to succeed. So um, 2019 is going to be a big year for just kind of seeing like like as a you know Fed keeps hiking rates, where does the economy go? Um, I think it's very possible that we could continue to grow with a normal amount of interest rates, a 4%, a 5%, a 6% interest rate. I don't see why all of a sudden that would stop the uh, you know economic growth other than if businesses lose confidence more and more and they stop you know getting as many orders and things like that. They stop employing as many people because they aren't feeling as confident. That could change. But as far as just you know looking at it, like, like uh, if we have a 5% interest rate, that should not just crash the whole, whole US economy. If it does, that speaks volumes to like, like 
like how dependent we are upon uh, interest rates, right? There was a great clip I watched last night. Well, it was more than a clip. It was like a 30 minute video actually. Uh, Warren Buffett, I was just watching this last night, just kind of going through this. This was an old, uh, you know, video from like seven years ago, like 2011, you know, we got out of the recession in 2009. 2010, 2011 were still horrible years. Buffett was talking in that video about, you know, how basically housing is such a big indicator on the US economy and things like that, right? And I get comments all the time that are like this in the comment section, which house prices would fall 80%, you know, just a lot of people uh, feel like they can't get into a house, they want housing prices uh, lower than basically they are right now, okay? So there's something interesting here. So the, my second point I wanna make is higher rates should hurt buyers a bit as mortgage rates go up, payments go up, okay? So if you're going to buy a house, um, you know, let's say in 2019, the mortgage rate's probably gonna be quite a bit more, that mortgage payment on the house is probably gonna be quite a bit more, assuming the house price stayed the same than it was, let's say, a year or two ago or something like that, right? But on the, on the flip side, it gets many real estate investors out, okay? So many real estate investors have been buying up a lot of properties over the, let's say the past, you know, five to seven years, something in there, um, that basically when real estate investors buy up a bunch of properties because these rates are so low, they look at it as we're gonna just buy and hold these properties and make rental income on them for years and years to come, 10, 20, 30, maybe 40 years in the future. Who cares, uh, you know, about property prices in the short term? But what, the, why this is a bad thing, so it's a great thing for real estate investors having low rates, but why it's a bad thing for overall housing market, one is it makes housing prices go up a lot, okay? So if you already own a home, that's great for you. Housing prices go up, your house is worth more money, right? But for most people that aren't already owning a house, it's bad news for them. Because let's say you're a real estate investor, you buy 10 or 20 properties out of a town of let's say a thousand homes, right? Let's say there's a thousand homes in this town, you buy 10 properties. That's 10 less properties that are now in the market, which means now there are, there are basically more people competing for the other houses that are for sale because you took 10 out of the market and you have no interest in selling those, right? And when you have a ton of people that are real estate investors that are borrowing at very, very low rates, it basically, you know, it messes up with the supply and the demand out there. There might still be a lot of demand for housing, but you're basically taking the supply out with the more and more real estate investors you have in there, right? Which makes prices go up and up and up. So as mortgage rates go up, basically that should make some real estate investors kind of look at things and they're like, man, I can't even make money on this property. Now it's not worth it for me to buy, to buy this property because now I have to pay a much steeper interest rate than I had to pay, let's say four or five years ago or something like that. So I think that's a good thing for real estate overall. I think it's going to hurt real estate prices, which I think a lot of people need real estate prices to be hurt because I think a lot of people would love to buy a house right now. They just simply can't afford it in a lot of these cities, especially a lot of these big cities around the United States. And it's just kind of, they're kind of looking at it and they're like, man, I, I got a good job. Uh, I'm making good money. Maybe I'm making the most money I've ever made, but dang, I still can't afford a house in, in such and such city and whatnot. So I think the, the fact that, you know, interest rates are going up and up, I think that's going to take some of the real estate investors out, which I think is a good thing that will hurt housing prices, at least uh, in the short term. All right. Number three, right now we are in a period where all news is bad news. Only negatives are seen right now. That is how I would categorize most of 2018 in the stock market. Okay. All news news is bad news. It doesn't matter what news comes out. doesn't really, you know, I almost feel like it doesn't matter what Powell said today, the market was going lower today, just because oh, right now we're just in this period where it doesn't matter what a company reports for numbers. It doesn't matter what is said out there that's positive. Don't matter what, they're going to always take the negative. You ever know that person in your life that, that doesn't matter what you say to them, they always look at the negative in it. You know, the people that always look at the glass half empty, right? Uh, you could give them a 10 things that are positive, but if just one is slightly negative, they're just going to get fixated on that negative thing and that's just where their head's going to be at. That's how I feel the market is right now. It doesn't matter what comes out news-wise, everything's a negative right now. Everything is seen as bad. Everything is just, you know, we don't like that. We're here, Oh, here's this one little thing over here. A company reports earnings. They could have beats across the board, but if they have one little thing wrong over here, oh, everybody points at that and they say, well, that this is why the stock needs to go down 10, 15%. That's just a market we're in right now. Everything's negative. There's no, there's no looking at the, the sun right now it's just a bunch of storm clouds and that's all anybody wants to see even if there's a bunch of blue sky there might be a storm cloud over there and that's all everybody's pointing out is that storm cloud over there that's unfortunately the market we're in right now we don't know how much longer this will last if it will last you know a couple more months or three more months or six more months but that's just a market we're in it's a bottom line you look at every single stock right now you get everything that's coming out economic data wise stock market wise Every single time, it's just the negatives are seen in it. They're never looking at the positive. That's the market we're in right now. The number four,
fourth point I want to make is why is it so bad that we're clearing out the spec money, okay? We should want that. We should want to clear out the spec money. The spec money, what do I mean by that? Is, you know, when interest rates are so unbelievably low, you have a lot of people that take out, basically invest extra money that they don't even have to either buy more real estate properties up as real estate investors or stock market investors that margin out money, take out loans of money they don't even have so they can invest more money in stocks, right? Because they're hoping it's going to go up. Same thing with real estate investors. So when I look at this, I'm like, what is so bad about getting out the spec money? Maybe it hurts a little bit in the short term, but I would rather have a much more honest economic system out there than rather have a, a you know a ton of speculators in the space who are just you know uh, basically trying to you know shoot their, their their dollars up with steroids and trying to invest two dollars at a time or three dollars at a time or a hundred dollars at a time you know when they only have one dollar in the bank right I would rather have a much more you know honest system out there rather than all this speculation this cheap money sloshing around in my personal opinion it just gives us a, a clearer look on what's the actual uh, you know uh, stock market valuations real estate valuations I'm looking at stock market valuations right now that are honestly the cheapest if you look at a Ford P basis right now we have the cheapest Ford PEs on the S&P 500 companies that we've had in years and years and years. When I look at that, I'm happy that is that way, okay? Last thing I wanna do is pay nosebleed forward P's on companies like we might've had to do the past few years. Um, I would much rather pay the lowest forward P's we've had in a long, long time. Like you can look up that data, S&P 500 forward P ratios. We are literally at the lowest we've been in a long, long, long time in the stock market, okay? That makes me feel much better as a long-term investor in stocks that I'm getting to buy at much cheaper prices. There's nothing worse than having to buy uh, at the, you know, let's say forward P's are at a 20, would you rather buy a Ford P's that are at a 20 or Ford P's that are at a 14 or 13 or something like that? Obviously, the lower the better as a stock market investor, especially if you're looking at it from a dividend perspective, because then you get to collect a bigger dividend yield uh, than what you would have usually, right? So in my personal opinion, what is so bad about this? Like, I absolutely love this, guys. Um, it, you know, as a long-term investor, as if you're a short-term investor and you're, you're planning on selling out your stocks next month or next year, yeah, right now is not fun for you, right? Right now sucks for you, but if you're a long-term buyer, and you don't care to sell stocks for 5, 10, 20 years down the road. Like you literally shouldn't care about this. This is just a buying opportunity for you um, and should continue to be a buying opportunity as long as the market just keeps pricing in everything that's negative. Like the next at least six to 12 months should be a great buying opportunity for anybody out there if you have a long-term perspective. If you're just short term, yeah, it's gonna be a bad period for you, right? But if you're a long-term investor, like, like you would much rather buy at much cheaper prices than way up at elevated prices, right? And valuation wise. Um, so I just want to end out here. We're looking at the put option play of the day. It was in FedEx. FedEx is not usually a stock that you would think about for, for put options or call options. This is not usually a stock that moves huge, but my goodness, guys, uh, FedEx puts were definitely the play today. Some of those puts gained 300, 400, 500, some close to 600% on the day today. It was kind of an interesting day. It was kind of a good play because you looked at it and FedEx was reporting earnings last night. So you could have went and bought some puts knowing that right now the market just sees everything is negative right now. Every stock gets killed. FedEx came out uh, and lowered their guidance a bit. That killed the stock off. And plus you had Powell coming out today, which you knew that yeah, more than likely the market was going to look at that as a negative because the market looks at everything as a negative right now. Um, you know, FedEx puts, if you just kind of add it up, it was a, it could have been a great play for you out there. So I just want to point that out to you guys. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. As always, let me know what your opinion is on anything we discussed in today's video down in that comment section. Thank you for watching and have a great day.